Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your girl, it's Hattie, and you're watching Ladies in the Locker Room. Well, first of all, Happy New Year. It's a new year. It's 2023. And I got to say, 2022 went, came in like a lamb and went out like a lion. There's a lot that happened in 2022. We've got a lot of sports to get to, and we're going to get to all of it. First of all, I want to tell everybody I'm going to have a special guest a little bit later on in the show. His name is Mr. Russell K. Yay, Russell. Russell is another good friend of mine uh, who is in sports record, sports reporting and sports news. Russell has a radio sports talk show. Russell and I get together and we have a great camaraderie. We have great sports talks uh, about everything going on in sports. So a lot of times we simulcast. I record uh, live Facebook Live, YouTube Live, um, and even LinkedIn Live, and he records um, on the radio and some of those other platforms as well. So Russell will be joining us this evening a little later on between 8.15 and 8.30, and we look forward to having Russell. Russell is always fun and engaging, and that's what I love about Russell K. Okay. So he'll be back in a little while, and we'll, we'll you know, get some good stuff that we're going to be talking about. I'm your girl. I'm Hattie. As you saw my intro, Ladies in the Locker Room has been around a very long time. Um, Ladies in the Locker Room is my my baby. Uh, as a kid, I grew up in sports. I played a lot of sports. I played basketball, softball, ran a little track, played baseball with the boys. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's how I got into sports was playing with boys because growing up in New Jersey as a young lady, early on, there weren't a lot of sports for girls. So I played with the boys which gave me an edge. When they did finally present sports for girls, I already knew how to play because I'd already been playing with the guys. Um, so my very first team, I'll never forget, was Original Joe's All-Stars uh, in Passaic, New Jersey. And Original Joe's was a, a all-women's softball league. And the owner, his name was Joe, saw me playing baseball with the boys in number 11 park. And he said, wait a minute, that, that's a girl. And you're playing baseball. And I'm like, yes, sir. He's like, you need to come and play for me. Well, at the time, I was probably 12. <laughs> and these were women. But he didn't care about that. All he knew is that I could hit a ball, I could catch a ball, and I could run really, really fast. And so I became one of the original Joe's All-Stars. And that was the first team that I was on. Then I went on to play for the city and the rec department and even the Boys and Girls Club. My first coaches, Mr. Bobby Owens and Mr. Harry Johnson, those were my first coaches who coached me in sports. As I said, I, I started playing sports when I was probably about nine and again, playing with the boys and then going on to playing with the, the girls and leading into, uh, I want to say, high school sports and uh, the community sports at, at the community center, the rec center. I played rec sports all my life. I played as long as I can play. And when I grew up and got married and had babies, I became a coach. And then I coached as well. So sports has been around and been in my life a long time. This is how Ladies in the Locker Room was created. I created Ladies in the Locker Room because of my love for sports. Now, my love for sports started way even before then. Back in New Jersey, uh, there was a football player that lived on my block. And I was a little bitty girl. Now, I am aging myself right now, but I love my age. I feel good about how old I am and how grown I am and how long I've been loving sports. But I was a little person, a little girl, not knowing what's going on in sports. But my family gathered around the TV on Sundays and they watched football and they cheered off for football. So that was how I started watching football. Now, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know when they were cheering. A lot of times if somebody made a tackle, I said, touchdown. And it's like, no, 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 that's not a touchdown. That's a tackle. Well, the reason they were cheering for the tackles is because one of my neighbors and uh, from my alma mater from Passaic High School was one of the most feared men in the NFL. And he was kicking butts. He's from the Oakland Raiders. And that was the first team that I fell in love with, the Oakland Raiders. Can anybody out there tell me what his name was? We're going to go to a commercial break, and then we'll be right back. And then you tell me, do you know what his name was? We'll be right back. Hello, guys. My name is Gloria. I am an instructor at LA Fitness Atlantic Station. I teach Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and on Saturdays, we hike. We go to a different location. Our classes are 545 at Atlantic Station. There's kickboxing, there's body work, there's power 
circuit, everything you can imagine, and then we hike. We hike Kennesaw, Stone Mountain, the Palisades. We go everywhere. Come out and join us. Find out what your mission is and have fun while you do it. You can find me on Facebook, Gloria Jackson, and I want you to have fun while you get fit. Come join me. So yes, that's my girl, Miss Gloria Sunshine Jackson. Yes, if you love fitness and you're in the Atlanta area, you can find her, as she said, at LA Fitness at Atlantic Station. Let me tell you something. I went to uh, record Miss Gloria and I'd never seen her work before. And if you're really serious about fit fitness, she's definitely someone to go and take a look at. She had those ladies working hard. Now I've been telling her, I'm coming, I'm, I'm coming to come, and I need to be there right away. I should have been there. But of course, no one tries to go get fit during the holidays, so that's my excuse. Well, it's after the holidays now, so yeah, I gotta go check out Miss Gloria Jackson. But if you're in the Atlanta area and you're really serious about some fitness, Ms. Gloria Jackson is a fitness guru and she works out. And like she says, they hike, they do body works, they do kickboxing, just a lot of different things to work the body up and keep you fit. Now, back to my question. Anybody know who that man was from New Jersey who played with the Oakland Raiders? Well, I'll tell you. His name was, drum roll please. Oh, do I have, wait a minute. Do I have someone logged in? Oakland Raiders was the team. His name was Mr. Jack Tatum. Jack Tatum. Jack Tatum also, as I said, went to my alma mater, which is Passaic High School. Jack Tatum was known as one of the most feared men in the NFL. Now, Jack Tatum may never make it to the Hall of Fame, even though he should. He may never get the recognition he should get. Back in the day, Jack Tatum had an incident where he paralyzed a player. So I know that's very serious right now. That's what's going on. We just had the, the incident with DeMar Hamlin, which thank God he's alive and he's healing. And uh, But back in the day, uh, Jack Tatum hit Daryl Stingley and he paralyzed him. Now, if you knew Jack the way we knew Jack, Jack was a gentle giant. I mean, just a really nice dude. Now, guys, if you've been watching football as long as I have, and if you've ever met any football players personally, a lot of times the man that you see on the field, the man looking like this animal, this beast, trying to kill people and take their heads off, that's not who they are as people. That's not. You, you've got to get to know these men as people. So Jack Tatum paralyzed Dow Stingley with a hit. It wasn't known as a dirty hit. It was a good, clean hit. But sometimes playing the game of football, when you hit a person, as with Jamar Hamlin, when you hit a person at that point in time, at that point, it just doesn't turn out well. So the same thing happened between Jack Tatum and Daryl Stingley. Now, Daryl did not die from his hit, but it did paralyze him. Um, believe it or not, that haunted Jack. Jack never went out to do anything like that to anybody, but he played his game. He went out there and he did what he was supposed to do week after week, which is to make those other players fear him and get out of his way. And he did his job and he did it well. And I hope that one day the NFL recognizes who Jack Tatum was as a man and as a player. He was an awesome guy. He went on to open up a daycare out in Oakland and give back to his community and also give back to his community in Passaic, New Jersey. And I really hope that one day the NFL forgives Jack because Jack and Daryl did finally get together and they did finally have a conversation. And Daryl knew it was a clean hit and it wasn't anything, um, you know, on purpose. So he didn't do it on purpose. So if Daryl forgave him, I think the NFL needs to forgive Jack and Jack Tatum needs to be in the Hall of Fame. So I'm putting it out there. For those of you who don't know, if you, if you don't know, now you know, Jack Tatum needs to be in the Hall of Fame. And so I want to make sure everyone understands that and, and you know get it out there. So now let's talk about some sports that happened in 2022. As I said, sports in 2022 started off kind of crazy. And then it kind of picked up. Starting off kind of crazy, well, we had the Olympics and nobody talks about it because it almost didn't happen. 
the Olympics was going to happen and it wasn't going to happen and then it did happen and then nobody could attend and then people could attend, but they couldn't get in. It was just a lot of crazy stuff going on. So they finally had the Olympics. It finally went off, but not without a hitch, not without a bunch of problems, not without a bunch of COVID. Um, and unfortunately for the for the players um then we had players who were not able to play very, very before the games even took off uh we have players who you know got disqualified got taken out of the game like i said sports um didn't go off without a hitch in 2022 uh and a lot of the things like i said starting starting off as i said with the um with the Olympics, which I'm looking for some pictures because I did have some pictures uh, um, that I might want to share with you. Uh, starting off with the Olympics and, uh, you know, and some of the players, uh, I definitely want you to know that, um, you know, the Olympics is a big deal. And those players who get the opportunity to finally get there, um, it, it's a big deal. And unfortunately, no, not everybody does get to get there. And the ones who do or the ones who did not, um, it makes a difference. So uh, we'll get back to some of the players who did and did not. And uh, America did okay in the Olympics, as we always do. We didn't win basketball. <laughs> we weren't the dream team this year. Um, but we were there. And the and then that was the other thing because of COVID, a lot of the main players didn't get to go and and a, a lot of um a lot of other players did. And then ironically, you know, uh, uh, America NBA has a lot of foreign players. So some of those players from other countries don't even play for the United States during the Olympics. They play to represent their countries. So I thought that was very, very, very odd and very ironic. One of the other big stories in 2022, of course, was the Brittany Griner story. Well, if you don't know, Brittany Griner was a WNBA player. So during the regular season, she played for the WNBA here in the U.S. Now, if you guys don't follow the WNBA and you don't understand, the WNBA players, they don't make big money like the NBA players. Matter of fact, they don't even make a fraction of what the NBA players. And part of that is your fault. Yeah, you, your fault. Yeah, you, your fault. The reason for that is, is that we've got to support the WNBA players a lot better. Now, if you haven't had a chance to go to a WNBA game, you have got to go. I'm a girl who played basketball, and I'm a girl who played basketball very well, and I'm a girl who beat some boys in basketball. Same thing happens in the WNBA. Some of those girls are phenomenal players as Brittany Griner. Um, she was one of the top five players in the WA at the time of her incident. So as I told you, because playing here in America, they don't always make enough money. So a lot of the players play overseas in different places. So in Brittany Griner's case, hers was Russia. She played for a Russian team. Now, how she ended up in Russia at this point, I don't know. But as I told you, a lot of the players play overseas during the off season because that's how they can make some real money. Unfortunately, they have to go out of our country to get recognized and make some real money. So that is what she did. Now, I know you all probably know the story by now. They found some paraphernalia, uh, a, a vape pen or something like that, 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 that they say may have had some marijuana or marijuana residue or something like that. And she was arrested because in Russia, whatever she had was illegal. So she was arrested and she was detained for several months. I remember reading stories and her saying that she just didn't think she was ever going to get out of there, you know, being a black woman a black lesbian woman in a foreign country, I can imagine had to be pretty scary um, for her. And she did mention that. So, you know, thankfully uh, through negotiations with the president and other entities here in America, we, we were able to get Brittany Griner back home, back on U.S. soil. And again, if you were able to check everything out, you'll find out they cut her, they, you know, they had her to cut her hair off. Now, what I heard was it was so cold there that they would make her take a shower. And then after the shower, when she got out, her locks started to freeze. So this is why she cut her hair off because her hair was still wet after the shower. And then she was forced out into the elements and then her locks would freeze up. So now she would kind of walk around with icicles kind of hanging off of her head. So this is why she ended up cutting off her, her locks. And I just, you know, hopefully... 
I know she has a story to tell, and I don't know if it's going to come out as a book first, and then maybe a movie. But Brittany, I'm uh, Brittany, I'm your girl. Give me a call. Let's make that happen, because we we know you went through some things there, and and we would love to hear your story. And um, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen, uh, sooner or later. It will definitely happen where we will hear about the Brittany Griner story. Thank God she was released. She's back home on American soil, and she made it out alive. So that's a that's a good thing. All right. Another big story is the MLB, the MLB, MLB, uh, uh, Major League Baseball. They pulled uh, their all-star game out of Georgia early in the year. Again, politics. There's a lot of politics going on. And uh, Georgia, Roe versus Way, all of that. Um, a lot of people weren't real happy about the decisions that Georgia was claiming to make concerning Roe versus Way, concerning women's and abortion rights and you know uh, uh, women's rights to do what they want to do with their body. And a lot of people weren't happy that Georgia was taking a stance against that. So because of the, all the politics and all the problems, MLB decided to pull the All-Star Games. Well, that helped, that did hurt Georgia financially because these are situations where, you know, People come into Georgia, they, you know, you bring in all the money for the hotels and the vending. So it's an opportunity to bring money into the state. Well, they lost that opportunity. They had to, uh, they had to go ahead and uh, cancel it because they weren't happy with the decisions being made. So the All-Star Game was pulled out of Georgia, sent elsewhere because of politics and women's rights. And like I said, the Olympics it was probably one of the worst ever. I, I don't think there's ever been a, a, a worse Olympics than this last one with the COVID um, and the lockdowns and all that kind of good stuff. And then let's talk about Tiger Woods. Now, I love Tiger. Tiger Woods is a golf uh, champion. To me, Tiger Woods have, has done things for golf that just has never been done. He's brought an awareness to golf that had not been brought before. So we will forever be indebted to Tiger Woods for what he's done for golf. And we love him. And I got a chance to meet him years ago when he came to Atlanta for the PGA Tour. Well, as you know, this year, Tiger Woods had a really serious car accident. This car accident was so bad they didn't think he'd ever walk again, let alone play golf again. Well, lo and behold, he did both. He did walk again, and he did play again. Now, he didn't win the PGA Tour this year, uh, but he did get out and he did play. So he was able to get up, walk, and he was able to swing a golf club. And we were very thrilled to have Tiger come back and get a chance for us to see him back on the greens. And he looked good. Um, as I said, he just didn't win, but he did look good. Well, Tiger always looked good. I'm glad he was standing up playing golf. And I think probably one of the best pictures that I saw was Tiger uh, playing with his son. And uh, he was teaching his son golf, and they just seemed to be having a great time. And, and I think that that was one of the other things that allowed him some time to be home with his family uh, because he was not on the road playing all the time and all that good stuff. So um, he got a chance to spend more time um, with his son and get a chance to play some golf with his son. Uh, my hair is just, you know, it's not bouncing and behaving. It's not acting right. It's in my eyes and I'm trying to get it to lay down and leave me alone. So thank you, Tiger, for making it back. And I know he'll be back next year. I'm, I'm pretty sure he will be. Uh, like I said, the accident, they didn't think he would ever walk, let alone play. But he did play and he did walk. Uh, we're going to go to our next commercial. And then we'll be right back with some more sports. Now, you guys, I always talk about that commercial <laughs> every time it plays because I'm such a foodie and I am kind of greedy. Yes, I, I love a good meal. And every time I see that commercial and I see that the smoking crab and, and all that, love some crab legs, love some seafood, it always makes me hungry. It makes me happy that I'm able to eat it. I know some people can't eat shellfish and they're allergic. I'm happy to know that I'm not. So uh, if you invite me to a, a, 
a seafood bash. I'm there and I'm ready for some crab legs and some shrimp and, uh, and I'm ready to have a good time. All right, so moving right along. Um, those were some of our top stories uh, for 2022. And um, um, there were many, many, many more, but those were just some of the top ones. I want to move right on to, uh, let's get, let's, I want to start off with uh, Damar. Damar Hamlin, um, of course, if you guys watch football and he was watching that Monday night game that happened a couple of weeks ago where he took a hit and he stood up and then he fell down. And he actually went into cardiac arrest. I want to first of all say thank God for the the coaching staff, for the team that rushed to his side, and that they were able to give him C- CPR and revive him, and ultimately save his life. Oh, that's the last thing. If you're a fan, if you've been watching football as long as I have, that's the last thing we want to see is someone get carted off the field, and then to know that this was such a severe, severe accident. As it happened, I've been watching the news and watching different programs, and I heard a doctor say that this is not an unusual uh, injury, that it has happened and it does happen to over 30, at least 30 players a year, um, in even in the middle school and high school and collegiate uh, sports and football. So I was really shocked to find that because I, I never heard about it. And then I was told that the widow of a former player who was watching the game, the same thing had happened to her husband years and years ago, just happened to be watching the game that night. And she relived that whole devastating situation again. And like I said, I'm happy to report tonight that DeMar Hamlin is doing better. He's you know, still not 100% out of the woods, but he's gonna he's, he's been moved, he's, he's gone home. He's left Cincinnati uh, Medical Center. So he has returned home where he can be on his home state and he can get some medical attention there and he'll be able to you know, heal and be at home. Let me tell you, whenever you get sick, the best medicine is if you can just go home sometime. So we're glad that he was able to go home and in that way his family can be there for him and care for him and love on him. And if you watch the first game the team had this week when they went back, the Buffalo Bills, um, and in the NFL, I want to say kudos, big ups to the NFL. The, the way they supported and celebrated DeMar's life was awesome. The outpouring of love and support was phenomenal. And then he has a he, he has a nonprofit that he does uh, to raise money for toys for kids. Well, he had a very small amount that he usually would try to raise. And I say a small amount because maybe it was a couple thousand dollars, but it got up into the millions. The outpour of love and support, the people just all of a sudden started donating to his, you know, his fund, which is an awesome thing. And then I heard also that now he's selling T-shirts to raise money for um for the 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 emergency responders he just he's very you know very very um for first responders you know he's you know been online and sending out message and 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 very grateful for you know what they were able to do for him so i think it is so awesome that now he is raising money for first responders. So if you get an opportunity to buy a t-shirt from DeMar Hamlin, that's what it's for. He is now um, raising money for first responders. So, and I think that's really, 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 really cool. All right, so he's selling t-shirts. If you can buy you one, you'll be raising money for first responders. And yes, he's still in recovery, but he's home. And that's a good thing. Um, I want to talk about College Football Hall of Fame. Two of my favorite guys got inducted to that. Uh, there's a, a group of other men who did, but two of my favorite guys, Reggie Bush and Tim Tebow, have both been um, selected for the College Football Hall of Fame. So I think that's really awesome. I love Reggie. I like his commercials. You know, who knew he had such a silly sense of humor? I love him uh, watching him on, you know, on TV, um, on the sports talk shows. He's very knowledgeable of the game. He didn't just play the game. He's a very knowledgeable person. So I think that's really, 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 really awesome. So kudos to Reggie Bush and also to Tim Tebow, Tebow, who both have been nominated for the college Football Sports Hall of Fame. So in the NFL, let's talk about the NFL. Well, as you all know, the end of the regular season happened last week. So now we're getting ready to move into the playoffs and getting ready for the Super Bowl. Well, because it was the end of the regular season last year, 
it's time for you know what some firings and some hirings. Uh, I'm sad to say that Lovey Smith is out already after just one season as head coach as the Houston Texans. I was like, one season? How do you, do you, can you really say he had a chance to make a difference in one season? Man, all the rebuilding it has to do for a team. Um, you know, I, I guess they didn't see it. I love Lovey. Lovey's always been a, a heck of a guy. I've never heard a, a, a bad thing about him as far as coaching or being involved in, in uh, the NFL. So he'll turn up somewhere, let's just hope. Um, one of the other big stories I want to say is the new head coach of the New York Giants, all right? Now, if you know me, which you should know me, I am a longtime New York Giants fan. Big fan of the New York Giants. I have a lot of players that I've gotten to meet, know, and love from the New York Giants. I've maybe 20 something years, I've been a Giants fan or more, actually. Um, so, some of my guys, some of my main guys in football play for the New York Giants. Now, the coach, I've heard nothing but rave reviews for their new coach. I heard from the parking lot attendants to the people that work in, in the kitchen. They love this guy. And what I love about him, what I found out about him is he comes from winning teams and winning coaches. I'm like, he worked, you know, uh, at Alabama, you know, behind Coach Saban. So that tells me he learned how to produce a winning team. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm, I'm, I'm told that he's worked behind a few winning coaches. So I think that's a good thing. And, and the Giants are looking good. They made it to the playoffs. I would like to say they backdoored their way in. To the playoffs but they did get to go to the playoffs so we're looking for that we look come on g-men i need all my g-men brandon jacobs mm -hmm. i owe you one brandon i'm still looking for you brandon's supposed to be a guest on my show one day and uh i'm just gonna catch him out there and jump on him yep i already told your wife brandon hattie miss hattie gonna jump on your husband when she see you because he's supposed to be a guest on my show brandon jacobs uh running back uh another future Hall of Famer, a Hall of Famer, uh, uh, he has a youth sports team. And uh, Brandon is doing a great job with the youth up in, uh, up in here in Georgia. And I got a chance to watch him coach and, uh, and work with those little guys. And he's doing an awesome job. And hopefully we'll have Brandon on the show. Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker. Stephen was on our show last year for the Super Bowl. We're hoping to have Stephen to come back and be on our show again this year and uh, just talk about sports. Steven is another, uh, he, he's forever a New York giant. Um, he still bleeds blue and then that's that. So Steven is another uh, former New York giant that I'm still in contact with and that watches and loves ladies in the locker room. What's up Steven? To Steven Baker, the touchdown maker. Um, and then there, there's just so many more. Some of my favorite all-time giants, Harry Carson. I love Harry Carson. Harry Carson was one of the most suave, devonair football players that I had ever seen from back in the day. Harry was so cool. I, just, I used to love the way he had his helmet hanging off the back of his head. I mean, that's just how cool he was. He would have that helmet hanging off the back of his head and just kind of standing on the sideline. He had the walk of a Greek god and the body to go with it. But Harry Carson was another one of my players. Rodney Hampton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see you, Rodney. Rodney Hampton is another one of my, my favorite guys. Love Rodney. Uh, Rodney was also on Ladies in the Locker Room. Thank you so much, Rodney, for coming on. Rodney got inducted into uh, a couple special places with the New York Giants this year. I didn't get a chance to to, to catch up with you, Rodney, in New York, but but congratulations to you. Um, and let me see, what else do we have going on? So we got Lovey Smith that's out after one season as head coach of the Houston. Jalen, now you know Jalen, another one of my Alabama boys. Jalen, uh, Road Tide Jalen. Well, no, maybe not, because Jalen left Road Tide, went somewhere else, and then got drafted and is number one. Jalen has been out hurt for a couple of months, but his team has been able to hold on. They're on their way to the playoffs. Jalen is back and ready for the playoffs, rested up and ready to go. He's had a phenomenal season. Um, Philly is looking fantastic with Jalen as the quarterback. So I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of Jalen coming up in the playoffs. And Tom Brady. Tom Brady broke his own record this year for most completions in a season. But after that lashing that the Falcons put on him, Falcons woke up, guys. If They've been asleep. 
they might have woke up. I don't know. Maybe they just play good against Tom Brady. Because remember the Super Bowl, that's who they were playing. But then Tom Brady woke up the second half and came back and beat him. But he didn't come back and beat him this time. Uh, the Falcons, I think it was 30 to 17. The Falcons put a whooping on Tom Brady. Tom Brady won't be going to the playoffs, ladies. I'm sorry. I know y'all just like looking at him. He can just stand there. Some of the ladies out there, I met a young lady. I said, you know, what do you know about football? She said, <laughs> Tom Brady. I'm like, okay. And then that was that. <laughs> Tom Brady. Okay, Tom Brady. Um, Tom Brady, I'm, you know, I don't know. I know Tom Brady is a winner. Tom Brady's the machine. It's almost unheard of that he's not going to the playoffs. We're just shocked. Of course, with the Super Bowl last year, um, everybody expected him to go back this year. And uh, this year... And then how many more years do you think Tom's going to play? That's going to be a question I'm going to ask uh, my special guest. We, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about that. How many more years do you think Tom's going to play? And uh, let's talk about discount double check. Um, he didn't have such a fabulous season as, all, uh, as well. And I'm like, how many more years do you think he's going to play? Uh, these are some guys that have been around for a while. And Tom Brady left and, and started a whole new life for the whole new team. And uh, we'll see if that's what's going to happen with discount double check. Is he going to stay one more year? Is he going to play one more year? Is he going to leave and go play somewhere else? We got to find out what happened. But anyway, congratulations to Tom Brady for breaking your own record for the most completions. Um, let's see. There was some more football news. Um, as I said, football is on their way to the playoffs starting this weekend. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs set his own NFL record for the most total yards in a season, 5,608 total yards. Get down, Patrick. Patrick Mahomes is, an, is another phenomenal player. I mean, he, he, when I look at Patrick Mahomes, when I think of Patrick Mahomes, I almost think of Clark Kent. I could see him with some little nerdy glasses on, uh, walking real fast, a little short steps like a little nerd. But when they put their uniform on, uniform on him, he becomes Clark Kent. I mean, he becomes Superman. So I love to watch Patrick, uh, Patrick work. And as I said, uh, he broke his own record. Uh, he broke an NFL record with uh, the most uh, completions at 5,000. Give me that number one more time. Hold on. Where is our number? It is... We're gonna lose lose him at that quick. Oh no, I threw I threw him away that quick. I, I hope not, but uh, there we are. Five thousand six hundred and eight total yards for this season. Congratulations, Patrick Mahomes. So, in other sports news for this week, uh, we have the Javante Davis fight. Well, Javante gets to keep his WBA lightweight title by beating Hector Luis Garcia. Uh, it was a good fight, Javante. It was a, but it was a TKO. You know, TKOs can be a little sticky every now and then. But Javante won by TKO. He gets to, and that's the other thing. In the fight world, if you're gonna beat the champion, you're gonna have to knock the champion out. Very rarely are you gonna beat a champion by TKO. Now, the champion may be somebody else by TKO. But very rarely will you beat a champion by TKO. So if you're fighting with a champion, you got to knock him out, knock him down. You got to do a lot of work in order to beat the champion. But Javante Davis keeps his w, WBA lightweight title by beating Hector Luis Garcia. So tonight, tonight is a big night in college football. Let's talk about those UGA guys. UGA is on their way back to the national championship football game going back for a second national title so uga is out in california at the sofi stadium and it was just amazing watching all of the uh, georgia fans who drove from athens to los angeles all of those uga fans and alumni who are out there supporting supporting their team it's going to be a big fight tonight but big up to those uga boys they're doing a phenomenal job. They're looking good. They showed them today at the barbershop, getting them locks tied, getting them hair, getting them waves. 
uh, uh, put in the hair, you know, like they always say, if you want to play good, you need to look good. So they showed the boys getting their look on today, and, I, and I'm really proud of them for that. So good job to the UGA guys, and like we're going to see what happens. UGA, UGA, UGA. So in my family, I have, uh, we're torn. My sister's UGA, my son is roll tide. And when they play, I have to go to another place to watch the game because I can't hear the game. Because a UGA roll tide, UGA, I can't even hear the game for those two uh, bickering through the whole game in the house. So usually when UGA has to play Alabama, I have to go somewhere else. UGA, UGA, no, 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 no. Tonight we will be watching UGA and hopefully we will get an opportunity uh, to see if Georgia is going to bring home another national title. Um, hopefully it'll be good. Uh, right now we'll go to our next commercial break and we'll be right back. So that's my boy, Rodney Harrell of Rod Star Enterprises. Rodney had a really awesome event called Walk to Elevate. It was really awesome. And next week, I'll have a video for that. Walk to Elevate was an opportunity to raise awareness and raise money to help to elevate the community. Uh, Rod Star Entertain uh, Enterprises, um, founded by Mr. Rodney Harrell. It was a phenomenal. Dr. J was there. Really awesome, awesome, awesome event. Uh, as I said, next week I'll have a video for that, so you'll be able to check it out. Well, you've been watching Ladies in the Locker Room. Well, my guy, he hasn't gotten on yet, and I am running out of things to uh, talk about because I've covered everything that I put on there. So um, I was hoping that he would get logged in. However, he didn't make it yet. Uh, he didn't make it yet, so we may have to see him next time. He has been uh, really, you know, um, uh, Russell has been a really awesome, awesome, you know, person, like I said, to communicate with and to keep um, coming back on the show. And he may click in in a minute before I actually log off. But if not, we will have him on another time. Uh, again, don't forget to watch the game tonight with UGA. Don't forget to go follow up the playoffs. Uh, uh, starting this weekend for the NFL. And again, prayers and keep your prayers up for Jamar Hamlin. We're going to keep praying for him. And uh, also want to make sure everybody else stays safe in the NFL and have fun uh, while doing it. I didn't say much about the NBA. It was my guy. Oh, here we go. My guy right here. Uh, uh, it, uh. Yep, him. He had a birthday. Happy birthday, LeBron. Uh, LeBron James is always doing his thing in the NBA. Uh, he had a birthday. Want to say happy birthday, LeBron. And there's his home guy right there next to him, D-Wade. Um, also, I'm glad to see Kyrie back on the court. Kyrie is in one minute, out one minute. He's suspended. He's back in. Kyrie is a very outspoken uh, political person himself. And um, he stands for what he stands for. And, and that's that. So we would like to hope that, you know, he keeps it together and stays in the game long enough to help the team out. But again, as I said, Kyrie stands for what he stands for. And he don't bite his lip about it. If he got something to say, something on his mind, you're probably going to hear about it from Kyrie Irving. So right now he's back in there. The NBA is in full swing. They're looking good. Um, my mellow, I'm looking, you know, you know, you know, I love Carmelo Anthony. That's my mellow, Lala. 
I love Carmelo Anthony, I, and I'm hoping he has, he's having a, a really uh, off season. And Carmelo's son and LeBron's son, they are grooming, they're grooming some superstars. And Shaq and Shaq's son, um, and there are other sons around the uh, NBA, Scottie Pippen, uh, uh, and then we've even got some daughters playing in the NBA from the fathers. So we'll talk about that one day. But uh, they're grooming, they're grooming some superstars, and they got it in the blood. It's just, it's in the genes. So we'll see what happens. You've been watching Ladies in the Locker Room. We'll see you guys next week. Keep watching. If you got a story you need me to talk about, you can always send me information at ladiesinthelockroom at gmail.com. That's ladiesinthelockroom at gmail.com. Send me some information. If you got a story, you got a picture, you got a loved one you want to tell me something about, hey, I'm all ears. Don't forget to tell a friend. We'll be back on next week, um, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. I'm sorry, 8 p.m. We'll be back on with Ladies in the Locker Room. I look forward to seeing you guys. And don't forget, send me a message. Send me a message if you have anything you want to share, if you want to talk about something. And don't forget, you can log on, be part of the show. See you next week.